Visit dojooutfitters.com and use code DOJO2 to save 10%. Enjoy the show. Give me a little countdown. Dojo Outfitter family, what's going on? Welcome back to the show. Today we got the boss lady, Heather Standing. <laughs> what's up, Heather? What is up? Glad to be here. Yo, thank you so much for yes. coming on. Thank you are you. truly an Oregon legend. I'll take that. I'll for take real. That. <laughs> for real. Like, thank you. when you think of matchmaking, we think of you. Thank you. Thank you. That's Did, probably offensive to somebody out there. <laughs> Namely, uh, Kevin Keeney, but oh, you know, we'll take it. Oh, Kevin. I love you, brother. Mm, yes. The man with the hat. We got a yes. spot for you in our heart, there you too. Go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, all right, we got to we got to start this off with a funny not really a funny story, but my first memory of me, you and Jamie. We were at Chinook Winds Casino okay. and it was um the title fight between Ben Egley and Ryan Walker. And the three of us were sit. You were sitting cage side with us, right? Okay. I had I had I was like in like the second row, and you were like right next to me to my left. And that fight was so close, oh, so intense, yeah. And so absolutely. like between rounds, I'd like look over at you. I'd be like, "That's one for the good guys," because I, uh, I was I was on Ryan. Wa- I was like a big mm-hmm. Ryan Walker fan. Yeah, still Walker a Ryan Mania. dude. Walker still Mania. a Walker Mania fan. What's yes, up, Ryan? Yes. Anyway, so I like between rounds, right? I uh-huh. keep looking at you. I'm like, all right, I think it's 1-1 one, one now, right? Oh, and no. uh, what was I anyways, c- crazy fight. It was just fun. Yeah. You know what okay. I mean? And yeah. it was like my first memory of you. And uh, yeah, it was just like a then- cool... A uh, fight and a cool uh, dude, just yes. a cool story. Agreed. Yes. Now, anytime that Ben Eggley's on a card is just an epic. You know, you're gonna have an epic night of fights. Um, we've had him obviously at Submission Underground as well. He started out uh, FCFF. I mean, it's just been. I've actually known Ben for a very long time, and he's great. But he always puts on a show. And Ryan Walker, my God, yeah. I mean, the two of them together, epic. So that was a fun funny. one. Yeah. Did, did you put that fight on? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Like, if I'm sitting cage side, I probably did. Yeah. I probably did. If that's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing I probably booked that one. Well, I always say otherwise, but I yeah. always have a, <laughs> I always have a funny, another funny story. Cause we went and we saw the whole, we watched the whole card uh-huh. and there was an up and comer on that card named Rudy. I'm going to butcher his last name from, uh, Chef Ross. Yes. Okay, I did not put that card together. Okay. Um, I was in the audience for that. I was not okay. sitting cage side. I, okay, listen, listen. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Rudy threw this man out of the cage. I remember. The cage door broke, and this man flew out of the... Like, you were there. Yes. You're my witness. This man, it wasn't like, oh, the cage door opened, and he fell out. Like, he was past the steps. Like... That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. So I'm going to test you right now okay, on your homework. Uh-oh, see uh-oh, if you guys did your uh-oh, research. Oh, no. Because that night was major PTSD for me. Why? Because of 2011, and there is a YouTube clip of it. In 2011, we had a show at the gym formerly known as uh, Brave Legion up there in Vancouver where Rick's story was with Pat White. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a show there. And our main event was uh, Tommy Takamoto versus uh sean baker sean baker's a wrestler takamoto is a phenomenal striker first round maybe the first or second anyway it was a five round title fight sean baker does what sean baker does goes in for a takedown barrels them right through the cage door cage door flies open they're both on the ground in front of their parents that was fun we're on a basketball court, okay? This was, this is the Wild West days. I'm sure people probably still do stuff like this, but we that was a horrible night for us. The cops came. It's a long story. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll show you the clip later. That ra- so that <laughs> It least- is on YouTube. It is. And I, every time I watch it, I mean, I was there for it. And let me tell you, it still is terrifying. And so when Rudy did that, I was like, well, at least we weren't the only ones. That's cool. <laughs> So. Well, it's funny because um, I went and got to train with Ryan um, at their the Gracie um, Barra Baja, and um, I like walk into the locker room because I was changing, and I like look up and I like look at this guy, and I was like, "Dude, you look so familiar." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm a fighter." I was like, 
I watched you throw a man out the cage. He goes, yeah, I was going to knock that guy out. It made me mad. Oh, my God. Well, I think it got declared like a no contest. Oh, I yeah. Think. yeah. That, well, du- that dude's in arm. In 2011, they got back in the cage and kept going. No, so, they didn't. Yes, they did. And a little tidbit about that. Dave Hagen was the referee. Dude, And Dave, Dave Hagen, Hagen took his belt out, literally took his belt off, and that's... I shouldn't tell the story. That is how the door was secured. True story. Okay, True story. So, uh, all right. So embarrassing. This is a side but, note. Did he go with like a like a belt tie, or did he like use it and then like put the thing in and like you know like a normal belt? He had to go with like the no, tie, he tied right? It. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He. Yeah. You'd have to. Get, yeah. You couldn't have him flying out of the yeah, cage again. But you know, of course, this is like eleven something at night. Most people are drunk. It was a total shit show, but it was great. You know. It was, memories so. Dude, what other what other like crazy things like that have you seen I, it's just not good for my resume to talk about that no um you know we've just we've had a lot of uh you know we had a show um back when my ex and i did shows uh we had a show up in kelso washington you know a little town outside of longview there and it was at a bar probably held about five six hundred people probably shouldn't have held that many but that's what we had and um, there was like 17 fights on the card, huge card. The whole thing was oversold out. People were just clamoring to get in. And it was our Valentine's Day show special. And there was like three girl fights, you know? So it was a big deal. People were just like so excited, good energy. And um, the I think it was the second fight, Aaron Eklund, I think, was the guy that was in the cage. And I can't remember his opponent now. But uh, the second fight and uh, the lights flickered. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> and, uh, but they, you know, they resumed. And then, like, a minute later, they went out. And I'm like, oh my God, well, this is a bar and grill. So, of course, smoke starts coming off the grill. And people are like, oh my God, I can't breathe. I'm like, go outside, you have a wristband on, you know, don't be dramatic. I'm freaking out, though, because I'm like, oh my God, we have no power at all. We go outside, the whole town has like no power. I'm like, that's not good. So, we call the power company. Of course, there's a recording saying we don't know when the lights are going to be back on. And we're like, there's no way we can refund this. There's no way we can redo this night. And so the bartender, you know, they want to make their money. They run up, you know, it's a country town. They run up to their house and grab generators and three floodlights. They attach the floodlights to the cage, the top of the cage. And my ex was also the announcer. And he's literally announcing with no music. He's like, just get out here and fight, you know. And about the 14th fight, the power came on completely. But... Yeah, so I always call that the night the lights went out in Kelso. <laughs> There's been some shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's been some stuff that I've lived through, yeah, with cage shows. I mean, it's really nice to be with Kevin Keeney and Jail Sun and where things are totally legit. So <laughs> All right. I know this is gonna be a hard question to answer. Just okay. I want a guesstimation. Yeah. How many fights do you think you've seen? Seen? Yeah, yeah. Like, like actually been, like been, been present. Been pre- so not yeah, like yeah, yeah. online or no, 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 or no, okay. no, no. Yeah. Like, and I'm cool with like a just a like somewhere in the neighborhood. Oh of... my god! So with my taxes, I had to sit there and figure out how many shows I've been to and stuff like that with travel and everything else. Um. Oh God, Ian, come on. I know. <laughs> it's just like I mean, the I... FCFF is, is averages about six shows a year. Plus, I was going to King of the Cage, Knucklehead when they were doing it. Um, down south in Rogue, you know, Medford and stuff like that. Um, boxing shows, cage sport, king of the cage. It could be upwards of almost 20 events a year, you know. And and with the smokers, too. I just went to a yeah. smokers show last week. So, smokers are fun, bro. So I've seen, you know, over the last 10 years, I mean, my first show I ever went to, the very first one I went to was Rumble at the Rose on 33. And we just did what, 105 in March, I think. So... That was my first show. It was in 33. <laughs> and, uh, and that was the first time that I was like, is this underground? Is this legal? I was like, oh, my God. We're gonna get, the police are going to come in any minute. And that was the night I knew I wanted Kevin Keeney's job. So. <laughs> no, I didn't want to be the announcer. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I want to be able to do this. This is so cool. And, um, you know, I would say, I'm going to guesstimation, 250. I don't know. I mean, you're talking about 10 years, 11 years of just saying yes and going everywhere. I mean, the whole point is that if you want to be in this business and you want to be in a position that I'm in, you have to know everybody. Yeah. You have to literally put your face in front of everybody. You have to shake hands with people that look at you confused. Like, who are you? And, um, 
you just have to, you know, just learn everybody's name and face, especially if you're matchmaking. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, like, you know, you asked me, did I match that Ryan Walker fight? And I was like, I don't think I did, but if I was sitting cage side, I probably was, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, you just have to know the gyms. You have to know people's weights, records. There's no, you know, I, I want to say there's no database for that. I mean, obviously, records are online on Tapology and MMA.com and whatever, but you have to remember. You have to be like, oh, I just saw you know, Rudy Shafroth knocked this guy out of the cage door. You know, I definitely want him for our title. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you have to be on the know and then you add pros into it. And it's a lot. So <laughs> it's a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this. Cause yeah. uh, the next question I had was how, how do you like, how do you stay on top? And like, how, how do you know about people who are up and coming? You know, the, that's what I really want to know is it's like, is it word of mouth? Is this coach come up to you and say, hey, I got this kid who's coming up. Got to see right. him. So when you are fight matchmaking, that's when you know more about the up and comers. Um, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't fight, uh, I haven't done MMA matching specifically for amateurs, like since probably 2018 or something like that. I don't know. When, when Basically when Submission Underground really took off, I... I was like, I got to just do a submission underground. <laughs> um, it's just too much to do all of it. But um, but that's when you get the coaches saying, I have a guy, or, or you're messaging the coaches going, hey, I need a 115-pound female that's O and O, you know? And they're like, I actually have somebody, you know? And so that's how you learn about that. I mean, other than that, it's just being on social media, being present on Instagram, on Facebook, and spending way too much time out of your day mm. and um, just paying attention. I mean, you know, I go to the smokers a lot, and the smokers are where those up-and-comers are. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of coaches would rather put their their O and O kids and, and smokers um, just to kind of get a feel, see if they really want to do it, you know, before they invest in like, hey, I want to put them in the FCFF or I want to put them in Lincoln City or whatever, you know, and so... Yeah, I mean, it's just, and a lot of these people I, I still know just from, you know, I have guys that still message me from people I worked with in 2011, 2013, whatever, and it's like, oh my God, you're still wanting to fight, okay. <laughs> you know? All right. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, you know, they're like, do you know, do you know, and it's like, I'm, no, not yet, so. Who's the best up-and-comer you've ever seen? Like, someone who started low, and then, did you, oh, do you remember, gosh. do you remember, like, seeing somebody, and you were like, ooh, this kid's gonna be good. I, you know, oh, you're making me think of people that I want to like, I, I'm upset about because they didn't fulfill what I thought they could do. <laughs> Not because they were like a bad fighter, but because they were a good fighter and they just didn't go all the way with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's something that's hard to see when you're a matchmaker. You literally watch people start school, graduate, go to college, you know, is what I call it. Like they start, you know, the fights and then they, you know, go to the pro ranks and everything else. And it's like... Those are the, I love watching people do that, the people that really want to do that. Um, people love to hate him, and he would appreciate the shout-out, and I'll give it to him, but Chris Williams, or Chris Lencioni, um, as he goes by now, Sunshine. Everyone mm. knows him as Sunshine. Um, when he first came on the scene, like it was hard to get him a fight, and, of course, then he opened his mouth, and it was even harder to get him a fight. <laughs> a, lot of want, a lot of people wanted to fight him, but, uh, you know, they would tag their friends like, oh, you, this person's going to beat your ass. And it's like, okay, well, sell them to sign up, you know. Um, uh, Keanu Moyer, you know, um, he's been fun to watch. Uh, I feel like he could go all the way. It's hard for flyweights. It really me and, is. Me and Jamie are big Keanu fans. Are you? Yeah, I yeah. don't blame you. I mean, another person that people love to hate. But you know what? Those are the people that they know what they're doing. They know how to market. They know how to fight. They know how to... Um, you know, put on a show and that's whether the people that are local like it or not and whether people are like, oh, it's a disgrace to MMA or whatever, it's what the UFC wants. Yeah. It really is. I mean, we've seen fighters that I'm not going to name, but we've seen local fighters that will go off to Bellator, they'll go off to the UFC and they're not, they're not marketing themselves. They're not, um, they're not exciting, you know? And so they get overlooked. They might be the most talented person on earth, but you know, I mean, we saw that with um, Demetrius Johnson. He gets no love, no love in the GOAT talk, none at all. And yet he's got this a massive belts and his record's phenomenal. But nobody really cared unless mm -hmm. you were a Pacific Northwest person who was like, oh, you know, he's from Washington. But no one really cared because he just didn't he didn't play the game. 
He wasn't the Henry Cejudo. He wasn't the Car McGregor. He wasn't the John Jones. He wasn't, you know, he was a good guy that just wanted to fight and he was really good at it. Yeah. But he was people a, didn't care. He was a nice guy. He was a nice guy. And everyone's like, cool, nice guy. Next. Yes. I mean, I work with the bad guy and surprise, the bad guy's actually a nice guy, but on TV he's not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's true. It's true. No, so, you could you could You gotta play the part. You, you gotta play the part. Hey, that's that's a big part of it. Because mm-hmm. a lot of fans, that's what they wanna see. They wanna click on something and yep. like have you have like laughing or be like, oh man, this guy's talking like smack. You have to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. You have to stay relevant. You have to be in conversations. Um, something that you and I were talking about earlier off camera was Gilbert Burns right now calling out Nate Diaz. Whether that happens or not, it's relevant and it keeps him in conversation. Yeah. And if you're in conversation like that, all of a sudden the UFC goes, you know what? There's a lot of people that are excited about him right now. Let's bring him in, you know? And then it just, it's all marketing. And a lot of fighters, you know, they'll ask me, what can I do to, you know, get to the next level or whatever? And I would just say, market yourself. And a lot of people get annoyed by that. They're like, I shouldn't have to. It's the promotion's job. It's the promotion's job. It's like, we got 20 plus fighters per card to market. You have to do your part with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right? It's, it's not a popular, it's one of those unpopular opinion. You have to market yourself, you know? Well, if you're like the 1% of the 1%, you don't, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but, but you know, the majority even, do. But look, like even the most famous people, look, Conor McGregor, he still is on social media He's trolling still people. Himself. And, yep. he, and trolling people and taking mm-hmm. pictures. And it's like he, I mean, yeah. He's like the example to follow behind, kind of. The way, the way I see it is like if you have a job that you're at and you're doing a good job, your boss is going to let you keep doing a good job. But if you're hounding your boss and saying, look, I just did this and I did this and I'm doing above and I'm doing above, they're going to go, oh, maybe we should talk about a raise, you know? They might not give you one. That's true. But <laughs> not guaranteeing. It's not like a foolproof system. But yeah. I was like, hold on, hold but, on. Yeah, uh, yeah, write that down. Are we writing this down? down? No, but I mean, you know, it's, it's true, though. It's like you have to put yourself in these people's faces. You have to. You have to. When they think about, you know, when you say, like, who's that fighter, you know, that has it, I'm thinking of people that are out there marketing themselves. You know, I'm forgetting about people that may have gone off to Vegas or gone off to wherever to try and make something of themselves, but you forget about them because they're not on social media. They refuse to do Facebook. They refuse to do Instagram, whatever. I don't like doing it either. Sometimes (laughs) there's days that I want to deactivate my account. I can't, you know, you have to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. So. So tell me some of your like favorite people to deal with when you're matchmaking. Fighters? Yeah, any or, anybody. Or they, does anyone like come to mind when you're like, oh, this person? Uh, love to work with them. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of like. Probably a lot. Yeah, there's yeah, there's absolutely a lot. I mean, there's a lot of ones that I don't <laughs> like to deal with you too. Um, you know. Okay. What are things? Yeah, what are some? <laughs> okay, hold on. Here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, okay. are, what are some things that you don't like people to do? Oh, that's easy. Tell to, me, to, I'm ready. To talk shit about the promotion. Ugh. I don't know why people think that's a good strategy. Not sure, but it happens. Um, or the matchmaker or Chael. That's always fun. I'm like, you know, I'm matchmaking for Submission Underground and people are talking shit about Chael. And I'm like, well, probably you, don't want to bring you on the show. You realize you know? he's a part and of it, this. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's not even meant in bitterness or retaliation. It's more or less just like, we, you know, with anybody, any company wants to bring you on if you're excited to be on. And if you're bashing the company, I mean, how often do people get fired, you know, for doing that online? Like, they'll go, oh, I hate working at Burger King, you know, <laughs> and their boss sees it and they're like, ah, guess well, what? see ya. It should be no surprise you're fired, <laughs> you know? I mean, so it's like, yeah, the people that do that, it's beyond me that that's a strategy they believe in and that's fine and, and we don't have them in. But, um, you know, people that uh, just... It's one thing to put yourself out there and and be like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But the ones that come through and expect it, I'll get people that message me and say, who's my next opponent? And I'm like, I didn't even ask you to be on the card, you know? Like, you know, I mean, and we have this one guy right now. He'll appreciate the shout out too. His name's AJ. I cannot pronounce his name probably right. Disiani. Disiani? Disiani? D-I-S-C-I-A-N-N-I. He's a purple belt. Okay. And this is the only problem. What's up, AJ? <laughs> Sorry, Dude, AJ. Okay. Hey. 
We need. We must need. <laughs> hey, we need to. Hey, no. hey, we don't need to talk to AJ. We need to talk to AJ's professor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I'm like level up, AJ. Yeah. No, no, he's literally going on a social media spree and tagging me in jail in everything. All of his friends and all of his supporters. And, you know, and, and I actually, I give him a high five for it because obviously I'm talking about him right now. I'm paying attention. I see it. I see it, AJ. But um, I was told to get mostly brown, I was actually told to get mostly black belts and some brown belts. And then, of course, we bring in, what, Derek Lewis, who's a blue belt, the baddest blue belt in the okay, world. Okay, but he is the baddest. Okay. okay. <laughs> But I'm like Chandler, you're contradicting me, you know. But, but he's yeah. the okay. But but he's Derek Lewis. Hey, let's be honest. Yeah. I, I, uh, Derek Lewis could probably piece up a lot of black belts. Yeah. Just yeah. with his size alone. Yeah. yeah. And if he like if he's a blue belt in jujitsu, yeah. that means he knows jujitsu. Yeah. So yeah. Pff, I don't know, man. Me. I feel like Derek, like J May picked Bader. <laughs> I'm picking Derek Lewis. Okay, okay. Yeah, you heard it here. <laughs> the baddest man in Houston, Texas. Where's Ronda Rousey at? I like him. <laughs> I like him. Yeah. I, I think he's like he's gonna. I he's gonna be all of two sixty five. We. Oh. Oh, hey, look at we me. We don't do weigh-ins anymore. All of <laughs> <Thank> 265. <laughs> We're not even, I don't even know what he's going to weigh because honestly, you know what's funny is that when Rumble Johnson came the first time with uh, Craig was his <laughs> opponent, he literally gets on the scale. We were doing, we were doing uh, weigh-ins at that time. And uh, he gets on the scale and, you know, Kevin calls out his weight. And I literally just did a tweet on Smash Underground. I was like, Anthony Rumble Johnson weighs in at, it was like 270-something. It went like viral. Like people, and I felt so bad. I was like, this poor guy, like I wouldn't want my weight out there, you know? But it's like, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, Anthony Johnson at 270. And now when people are like, what? Dude, you know? shout out to the fans on your page though, because <laughs> it was like 70% picked Rumble Johnson. And I was like, yeah, Whoa. I know. What? All the jujitsu community was pissed. <laughs> They're like, I could see who your fans are, you Whoa. know? I can see that. It's all UFC fighter fans. Yeah, it was so funny. I told Jamie, I was like, I like Craig by a heel hook. And what? Craig by a heel hook? Who would have guessed it? So I'm not going to name names. <laughs> You'll probably figure it out when the poster is updated. But uh, the number one request I've gotten lately is, yes, I'll accept Craig Jones as long as he doesn't do heel hooks. True story. No, but this is what's crazy is I, I literally messaged... I, this is a true story. I messaged Craig the other day and I said, I'm not joking. I'm being very serious. And I told him exactly what I just told you. And I don't want to say who the name was of the opponent at the time, but um, I think it's going to change anyway. But anyway, he's like, yeah, I get that. I'll do that. And I'm like, <laughs> everyone that's ever gone against you, Craig, is seriously pissed off right now. Like, you know, can you imagine? You know, like, oh, if, well, if he hadn't done that with me, then I would have, you know, yeah. So. Dude, Craig's just so cool. I know. He's like, he's amazing. oh, one hand behind my back. I know. I'll still submit him. It, I, for the longest time, it was like, can we get anybody to get Craig out of two minutes? One minute would be great, you know? And, yeah, and then it became, you know, Craig actually got a little irritated about it. I don't blame him, but he, uh, you know, it became like this game of who can get out of regulation with Craig. And he's mm. like, these guys aren't even playing. They just want to get out of regulation to be the guy to have done it. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's a big deal right now, Craig. Dude, Craig, <laughs> <You know? laughs> Craig is so good. Mm hmm He's so good. Yeah. Yo, since 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 we're talking about it, I actually want to ask you about the the face choke, face choke gate, oh, face, face gate. Choke gate, face we call gate. it tap gate, tap gate, verbal tap gate, to verbal be fair. tap gate, yeah, verbal tap gate. Um, dude, I want Mason Fowler to face choke me just so I can like feel it. I just I just want to I just want to know so I can be like okay. I will say this. Oh gosh, Mason Fowler is strong. He, dude, that, that He's man, super strong. oh, he looks strong. Um, there was a lot, I've, I've gone back and forth on my opinion of this. I really have, and I've had to be quiet because obviously, you know, I work for the company that, you know, whatever. I mean, Mason is our champion. He's our champion. Um, I had several conversations with Dave Hagen, you know, before and after. I was like, please don't do anything controversial in this main <laughs> event, Dave. And he's like, what the hell? You know, but I'm like, no, gotcha. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, please, please don't. No. Hold um, my beer. 
you know, poor, you know, I honestly, poor Dave sometimes. I mean, being a ref is like the worst, and Gordon Ryan is the first one to call him out for it, but every time. I'm like, your biggest fan is Gordon Ryan, but, and he's like, you know, but um, no, uh, you know, I told him, I asked him what happened, because Chael, I think, even commented on uh, the live stream that, um, that he saw me, or he saw uh, Craig tap. And there was a big, you know, confusion of, like, did Craig actually tap before he grunted, you know, the grunt that happened. Um, I hate verbal taps. Nobody likes them. But here's the other problem with that. What if, what if Dave let that go on and we get a snap? You know, what if all of a sudden Dave Hagen's the man responsible, Smith Underground's the company responsible for losing Craig Jones? Mm Mm-hmm. The legend that is Craig Jones, you know. I mean, fuck Craig Jones normally, but like, you know, <laughs> like we don't want to be the ones responsible for that. So, yeah, I but, mean, and that's that's really what it comes down to. Dave's job is nothing more than to be fighter safety, and that's what he is, you yeah. know. I mean, I don't always agree with his calls. Obviously, the internet has their opinions. We ran it back. So, and what happened? Exact he same. Th- exact same thing. And you know. The, so the next conversation was, oh, Mason stalls. Mason runs around. And then we put Mason with Vinny, and we saw it never go to the ground for five minutes, you know. We're playing by a rule set that isn't everyone's favorite, you know. And the, one of the problems that, you know, Chael complains about a lot, and I support him on this, is that in jiu-jitsu, there's not a set rule set. You know, in MMA, yeah. there is a set rule set. Everyone plays by the same rule set. Mm-hmm. There's not in jiu-jitsu. And until there is, if you don't like our rule set, then don't play, you know. But if you do show up, you can't be like, can we make it 10-minute matches? Can we do this? Can we do that? You know? A thing right that, after I said about I the no heel hooks. You know? <laughs> a, thing that, a thing I always talk um, to a lot of the professors that I get on here mm-hmm. is about mindset. I get, I get so nervous um, yeah. before competitions and stuff. And one of the things a lot of them talk about is playing the rules. Uh-huh. You, it's something that as much as it sometimes isn't fun, yeah. you, you at least need to know the rules. Well, and, and that's the thing. I mean, there's, you know, there's been confusion in the past. We have changed up things in the past. Um, but our rules are on our website, um, cagepromotions.com. Anyone that asks me, I can send them our rules at any given time. Our rules have not changed for quite a while. They're not going to change unless Chael has a whim or something or USC Fight Pass does. But, um... They are what they are, and and yes, and so if Mason is being strategic or whomever is, and you don't like it, well, you know, you know. Here, here's the thing: like everyone was seeing Craig Jones just tap people out, tap people out, tap people out. Well, eventually, the winner has to lose, and eventually, someone finds the strategy to make that happen. Mason was that guy, and so while the internet hates him, and because everyone loves Craig and everything. That's the rule set. He figured out how to play the game. I'm not mad at him, you know? Then he's got a good choke from the back. And someone else will tap out Mason eventually. And when they do, you know, maybe people will rejoice. I don't know. <laughs> but, okay, you know. here's... All right, you ready You ready for a blue belt opinion? <laughs> okay, uh, you ready well, for I'm this? not even a white belt, so I'll take it. You ready yeah, for this? I'm ready. Why try and take him down for five minutes? Why doesn't Vinny just sit down in the middle of the cage? Dude, I saw my shout out Phil Schwartz. Love, that's my guy. What's up, Phil? Phil laid down in a competition that I watched on the internet like a week. <laughs> like I Nate swear. Diaz style. No, no, no. <laughs> Worse than Nate Diaz. Yeah. He like coughing down like this. Was that Nick? No, it was Nate. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Nate, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was Nate. Nate. Okay. Hey, he just said, oh, you want to wrestle? I'm just going to lay down here. Why doesn't someone just lay down? Well, so, okay, so what was it? Sug, oh gosh, five, I think it was, five, me or four. We had Uriah Faber and uh, Paul Meow, Meow. One of, the, one, right? of the, one of the Meow brothers. Thank you, it is Meow, okay. Anyway, I can never pronounce that. But um, anyway, yeah, one of the Meow brothers. And, uh, you know, people were like, especially the fight fans, okay? And there was a lot of fight fans there because your eye favor was there. But, they were like, why is this guy butt scooting across the cage? They were like, who? You know? I like Uriah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Uriah, like, you know, he did what he needed to do. He didn't win, but he did, like, I mean, he twinkled toed around him, you know, and was not going to sit down with him. And something to, you know, if you want, like, a non-competitor at all opinion, uh, you know, Craig sits down. He sits down and he says, come play. Well, why should they? 
That's like walking into a scorpion's den, you know? And so Mason's like, no, get up here. Yeah. I want to play up here. You're sitting down. And so it becomes this, like, you know, the clock ticks, and everyone's like, what the hell? And, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's strategy. Yeah. It's strategy. And, you know, and Craig is lethal on the ground. Why would you want to go on the ground with him? Be like, come wrestle me, brother. I mean, eventually in the overtime, you get on the ground. So, and Mason is hella strong. I mean, not to say that Craig isn't. Craig definitely is. But it definitely is a Mason game if it comes to the, you know, verbal tapping. Yo, <laughs> what, I'm going to go on a little sidebar here because we're going to, I want to keep talking about Sug. And this is kind of about Sug. Okay. but. Dude, you're po- you do the fight posters. And I do. I dude, do. Fire. You make You're fi- making my entire year by saying that. <laughs> hey, for real though cuz well, Thank you. If you'll uh post like old ones that you used to oh. do, right? Oh man. <laughs> And yes. if you, you know what I mean? Like yes, from back I'm in the to say, day. Hey, look, I've improved, damn it. Look how far you've come. <laughs> yeah, thank Dude, you. When did you, you were like, hey, fight poster, I'm on it. You know, so I told you we used to do our shows. Uh, we started doing shows back in 2009, 2010. And, um, you know, we just, I started doing our own posters because we didn't have anyone else. And, you know, you're trying to save money, whatever. I was literally using Microsoft Publisher to do them. <laughs> I'm not joking with you. And, um, you know, for the FCFF, we had a lady that did it for like 25 years or something. She did it for, or not 25 years, but for a long time, like 25 shows. And, um, she decided that she was going to retire from the position. And Kevin called me up one day and he's like, Hey, he's like, she's retiring. And the only person I could think of to replace her is you. And I'm like, yes, please. I've always wanted to do graphic design. I never went to school like legit for it, but I always wanted to do it. So, um, a couple sessions, you know, shadowing with her and just finding my dang way, um, I did my first poster, like my first official cool poster was Rumble at the Rose on 100, which was a lot of pressure, by the way. Um, that pressure was only changed over when Chael says, hey, you're going to do submission underground and there's a UFC Fight Pass logo on it. And I'm like, oh, my God. But um, no, it's I thank you. It's it's really awesome. Like it's a personal like um, something that I enjoy doing. Uh, this last poster, I knew it was going to get a lot of buzz um, because of the names on it. And, uh, you know, my, my poor boyfriend in my house watched me do like 12 versions of this poster before I released it. And, you know, I was so happy because I only got like four haters on it that I saw online. I'm like, that's really good. We've improved. Um, and people are making their own mock posters too. And that's flattering too, in a way it's like, okay, well, it's a good card if people are making their own posters and spend their time doing it. But no, I'm very, I'm very grateful and thankful that, um, Chael trusts me to, to represent the company that way also. Um, We just revamped our website too, and I got to have all the fun doing that too. It's pretty exciting. So, so for, for me with that position, it's, it's fun to have that. That is really cool. In my arsenal. Yeah, that is, that is really cool. Cause it it definitely, (laughs) um, I have no artistic talent. So uh, my fight poster, it'd be like, like, uh, you know, the ones you see in the back when you go, right. You're like, Oh, who's fighting? That's what mine would look like. It'd be like, Hey, this dude is fighting this dude. (laughs) Be here at this time. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. I want to talk about one of our favorite guests on the show. Amanda Lowen. Oh, I love Amanda. Yeah, we love we Amanda. Yeah. Um, what is she getting a belt? Are we getting her? Ah. Are we getting her a woman's belt? Like you got the men's champion. We're asking you now. We're almost. De- if we could, we're demanding a belt for our favorite black belt, Amanda. What do we got to do to I'll get do her it. one? I'll Let's do it. do it. I'll do it. Let's do it. She's the woman's champ. <laughs> I no, you know, it's been she planned. needs it's a been strap. Planned. I'm, no, I did not just make that happen. No, um, so yes, long overdue. Now, what's funny about it is Amanda was in Sug One, the yeah. very first one, yeah, and every main card person, well, I think every winner got a belt. I mean, Chael was like Oprah Winfrey, everyone, you get a belt, you get, everyone got a belt. They're really nice belts, so anyone that competed at Sug One got a belt, yeah. Um, which is really cool. And they all expected it for Sug 2, and it didn't happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, here's your medal, by the way. Yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah. for coming. <laughs> and then uh, I think it was Sug 5 um, or 6, she headlined with Sarah Kaufman, um, which was awesome. And uh, she's gone against Jessica I now, Aaron Hurl, um, Jillian Robertson. Yep. And uh, we were supposed to put her with... Um, God, we've tried twice now with Roxanne, Roxanne Mutaferi, uh-huh. Roxy, and um, the first time, 
it was our March show for, you know, during COVID, right when COVID uh-huh. started and, and everybody, I mean, everyone was pulling out. Carlos Condit pulled out and was like, nope, we're not doing it, you know. Um, and then Roxy did agree to this one, but she did got, she got injured. And so, um, I, I literally went through the UFC roster. I'm not even joking with you. And, um, tried to figure out who was good at jujitsu. And, um, I messaged Chael and I said, I need Felicia Spencer's number. And he gave it to me, which was awesome. And, um, I messaged her. She said, yeah, I'm down. So, so she said, beats okay. Felicia. She's getting strapped. The title's on the line. The t- it's, it's the title's on the line. Now it's not. We can't call it the Sug Absolute title because Amanda's not going to take on a 200-some-odd pound no, girl. So no, we're just, not. No. We're calling it the Sug Women's Championship. It's what it is. So. Yeah. Yep. Gabby Garcia will just yeah, no. <laughs> come no, on in and be no. like, who? Yeah, yeah. Well, and now, you know, we, we've asked people that were 115 pounds. You know, Amanda, you know, runs anywhere from 145 to 160, depending upon, you know, training or whatnot. And, uh, so that's, that's around the weight that we're looking at. So dude, Amanda pieced me up like, um, worse than like, dude, she, she's intense, right? <laughs> no, nah, she was like, she's always been really nice when, yeah, oh yeah, when we roll, nice. yeah. but, um, yeah, she pieced me up one time real nice. <laughs> like a, she invited like, me and I was like, no, nah, you know, I like my position. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm good. No, like in like, in like the best way, like she's. Yeah. She's so good. She's one of the best she's people amazing. I've ever rolled yeah. with. So I know she she's super honestly when you're talking earlier about who's fun to work with, I really enjoy working with Amanda. Oh, she's the I nicest. Do. Yeah, she's great. Unfortunately, I have to work with Phil now to work with Amanda. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How I dare I know, you? I know, I know. How dare no, you? Phil and I have a we have that kind of we have a love hate. I feel like uh <laughs> I feel like me and Phil's relationship is uh love love. Well, that's good for you. That's my guy. <laughs> Phil needs that, you know. Hey, like um <laughs> side note, we're mostly talking about you, but I got a side note here. Phil has, besides my sensei, Mm -hmm. Phil has helped me the most. Yeah. Out of anybody else that I have met in my jujitsu. Yeah. Not from my school. Phil has helped me so much. He's like, honestly, like he's introduced me to so many people Mm -hmm. and um, he's just always been someone that I could kind of count on. So um that's my guy i like to i like to elbow phil and only because of the fact that you know when i first started in the in the game so to speak in the business um i was working out at a live mma and it was like 2009 2010 something like that and they had events at the time at the elks lodge in milwaukee yeah so first friday fights i think it was like and it was the first friday of each month Phil was the DJ. <laughs> so I'm like, sometimes I look at him, I'm like, Phil, we came from the same, you know, we started at the same spot, okay? You know, and he gets a little way with me and I get a little, with, a little way with him and I'm like, okay. <laughs> we each made our own way. But I remember you being the DJ and you remember me just being a person in class. So whatever. That's no. funny. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I yeah. might, dude, I might call him like Professor DJ now or ah! something. <laughs> He probably doesn't appreciate my story on that, but no, it's true, you yeah. know? Well, and Phil fought there, too, and he actually uh, fought in one of our shows, too, um, way back in the smoker days, and I like to drag out those photos wait, sometimes. Wait, he fought in a smoker? Well, not they, we call them smokers for non-sanctioned uh, events. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, he didn't say that. Uh, we should, I, 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 I should have. Hey, I should have dug deeper. <laughs> he wouldn't. I should have yeah, dug you, deeper. Yeah, you got to do your homework, Ian. I, no, no. I, I came to play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yo, okay, um, since we're talking about the women's MMA, yes. what about Grace? Grace Ganun- Gun- Ganundrum. Gun- Gun- Gundrum? Gundrum. Gundrum? Yeah, Gundrum. Yeah. Gundrum. She just got her black belt, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So she competed for us. Uh, it's been a minute, but she, gosh, I, didn't she go against Haley Van? No. Daniel no. No, it was in our show. No, Daniel has not competed in our show yet. We need to get her in the show. Yeah, what's we, up with her? Wait, it's not her fault. It's just our fault. <laughs> you know, I just haven't. I need to find her someone in her weight class. So yeah, because she's like a one fifteen or huh? Oh yeah, yeah. We had talked before, um, and you know, she just went against Roxy at another promotion, and um, and she said, you know, I don't want to keep doing that. <laughs> I want to go stay in my weight range, and so I said, okay, we need to find someone for you. But yeah, she's hit us up several times. She. She sad faces us sometimes when, you know, people are like, you should get Danielle. And I'm like, I know, I know. So. Yeah, but, she'd um, be a fun one. Yeah. No, I want to, like, I want to see Grace more. Yeah, I know. I would love to have Grace back. You know, she did compete for us and she put on a great show. And um, her and uh, uh, JM Holland 
uh, yeah, he's great. I love him. Yeah, he's wonderful. So they they were great to work with. Um, her mom came in too. You know, I mean, hopefully when we get back to having an audience, we can bring in a lot more um, outside talent to have yeah. back. You know, to come back. So yeah. yo, what's up with Sugar Sean? Oh, what's up with that he guy? He had a baby. <laughs> he had a baby. I I think he has a fight on the line in December. And our show's December 20th, and I think he's got a fight on the line. And so, you know, he, he I think he wanted uh, specific opponents, and when those couldn't happen, he he wasn't, I don't think he was uh, as open to Chael's idea of who wants Sean, you know. Um, I think he was like, no, I want these guys, and if they're not available, we can just wait it out. So, yeah. Uh, that'd be a fun one to have. You know, it's funny because it was kind of hit and miss reaction. Like, people were happy because they knew who they, he was, but they were like, but for grappling, eh. Yeah, but if you actually, like, okay. yeah, but, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, but you here. If <laughs> he actually posted uh, his last competition, uh -huh. and if you just would strictly watch it for jujitsu skills, it's there. Yeah, oh yeah. It's there. Yeah. He's a talented purple belt, yeah. but he is, he passes the visual test for me. Mm -hmm. Where you watch someone, you're like, all right, this, yeah. this guy. Yeah. <laughs> His coach is insane. Yeah. No, I, I, I would love to have him on. I mean, I think we'll definitely have him on the future. I mean, it's, you know, right now we, we kind of have this little um, time in the universe where a lot of people aren't doing anything else. Mm -hmm. And so we actually have access to more people than I think we normally do. Um, but yeah, it's we'll have him back so what about uh the main event let's talk about the main event uh satoshi ishii versus uh mason yeah what you think i don't know what to think yeah i mean you know honestly like so i've been kind of watching i've been kind of like paying attention to the audience on that one too um because you know i know mason mason's more of an mma guy whereas craig was more is more obviously a jiu-jitsu purist um and then we're bringing in what a judo, you know, phenomenon who's been a, you know, in a risen judo and legend, legend, exactly, legend. exactly. So true story. I'm going to show myself here a little bit, but, uh, Chael messaged me and he's like, Hey, we're going to have Ishii take on the winner of Mason or Vinny or whatever. And, um, I was like, who? <laughs> and he was like, Heather, <laughs> look him up. <laughs> so I did, I did, you know? Um, so I said, okay, you know? And so, here we are, but um, Mason was excited about it, and uh, you know a lot of the old school fans are excited about it. The new school guys are like, "Who?" You know, and mm. so do your homework. Yeah, yeah. No, I had to, and, I, and was, I do sometimes. Yeah, I, I was to... pumped. Were you? Yeah. yeah. Hey, the judo side yeah. of me said, "Well, okay. yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah. You want to exactly. wrestle? We gonna show you some wrestling. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, I think I think what people are concerned about is I think we go back to like the Craig fans that want to see Mason verbal tap too. You know, basically. And so we have you know Ishii who they think might end up doing like what Mason did, which is just stand up and everything. And I'm like, I think if Mason stands up, he might end on the ground regardless. Uh, so. <laughs> I have a feeling you know. that he's going to try and take him down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Just the slightest hunch. Mm -hmm. Hey, the slightest. Yeah. A judo guy. Yeah. He's going to yeah. try and take you down. Yeah. Million yeah. percent. Dude. And he's huge. He's big too. He's like 240 pounds. And I told pounds. you, we're not doing weigh-ins at these events. I mean, you know, but Mason, I think, so Vinny, Vinny was asking Mason about, uh, you know, what kind of weight he's running at and everything. And we were, you know, talking about it. I mean, even though it was like open weights, absolute. But Mason's pushing around 215, 220 on average. So not that big of a deal. Uh, <laughs> it might be when you're hitting the map. Dude, but <laughs> I don't know. 30 pounds. Yeah, the nice like... thing is that it kind of echoes in there with no audience, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to keep asking about names just because uh, yeah. these are just like some of my favorite. Name people. drop me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Austin Vandeford. Uh, oh, my gosh. We love Austin. Um, you know, everyone knows him as Paige's husband or whatever. But, you know, here in the Pacific Northwest, we know him as Austin Vanderford. And... Um, so I got to deal with Austin in the very early days of my matchmaking in FCFF. And that was my pleasure because first of all, I was involved in wrestling in high school days because my brother was on the wrestling team and I did the little Matt host scene. Um, I got my letter in it. That was my little claim to fame in high school. So anyway, um, I love the fact that Austin's a pure wrestler. I mean, that's his thing, but he's also phenomenal at striking, obviously. 
Um, and even though he is Paige Van Zandt's husband, he's so amazing on his own. And we got so much flack for him being on Submission Underground. Oh, he's a purple belt. Nobody cares. He's Mr. Van Zandt, blah, blah. And so what does he do? He comes out with a mouthpiece that says Mr. Van Zandt, you know, with a big, you know. <laughs> and uh, he taps out Jake Shields. Like, are you kidding me? So, yeah, he got some respect that night, which was well long overdue. So Put some respect Put on some that respect man's name. Put some respect on that man's name. He's still undefeated. He just, he's a bloody mess almost every time. But he, yeah, he won the other night, you know, and... I'm a fan of that guy. Mm -hmm. I really, I really like him. He's wonderful. You know, when, when Paige announced that she was doing the bare knuckle thing, I made a post about it on social media, you know, cautiously. And, um, and he messaged me and he told me kind of what happened with all that. And he was like, yeah, I was totally against it, but you know, here we are and we're good. And you know, the decision was made, but no, he's great. He's an awesome, awesome guy. So what do you think about that? About Paige, about Paige doing the bare knuckle? Um, bare knuckle in general concerns me. Um, you know, we've, we've seen, I think what the first one had, um, Rico Rodriguez, you know, yeah. I think is who we saw. And so it kind of became like the place that you go to die, right? It's like, well, okay, I'm at the end of my career. Might as well make some money off my hands, you know, not going to use them again <laughs> anyway, you know? Um, but when we see these younger people start, uh, flocking to that too, my concern is that they might be flocking for the financial reason, which I can't blame anybody. You know, everyone has their own what they want in life with money or whatever. But Paige is very young. Mm. And I have to assume specifically for her that her and Austin and her management team have a strategy. Um, I know that there was a fight that just happened Friday night, and whoever the winner of that was was supposed to be taking her on. So for Super Bowl weekend or something. Mm. But um, and, and I think Paige will do well. People don't associate her as a boxer. Um, but we'll just have to see. I mean, I know that her contract was like six figures, so... Or seven, excuse me, seven. I heard it was a mill. So <laughs> that was what I heard. So, I mean, at that point, you kind of reevaluate if you care about using your hands afterwards or not anyway. but Yeah, because she was, her UFC contract was crazy. It was like 16 and 16 or so, it was it, yeah, it, it, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, well, and, you know, I mean, I actually got the pleasure of seeing her fight. The very first UFC I went to was in Canada, Victoria, B.C. Um, and she, uh, God, what, she head kicked Becky uh, Rowdy Beck. And that was really cool. And I was like, right on, you know, um, I know they moved to Florida recently mm. and they're doing everything they can to like, just make sure that they're focusing on her boxing, obviously. Um, so we'll see. I don't know, but yeah, as far as the bare knuckle thing, I have mixed, re you know, mixed thoughts on it. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that I'm not sure it's good for the sport or bad for the sports, you know, but it's, it's an outlet, you know, for those who maybe aren't in the UFC or Bellator anymore, or those people that just want to make that money, get in, get out, get in, get rich and get out. As, <laughs> as McGregor would say. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Last, last name drop or yeah. last like name, <laughs> name that I'm going to ask about. Okay. Um, AJ Agrazam. Agazam. Agazam. Put some respect on that man's name. Dude. <laughs> Oh so my he, god. He he uh acts a fool and you guys never have him back. <laughs> oh my you know, there was a time that I literally told Chael, I said, Can we have somebody else on the card, please? <laughs> anybody. Uh anybody. No, um no, I, I like AJ. Um I, I I had to message with Sunshine today, actually, Chris Will, Chris Oh, Lucioni. hey, hey, oh, like <laughs> a, AJ's never gonna see this, so I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I'm gonna keep it a hundred oh, yeah, with you. By all means, you can. <laughs> He's, uh, he looked awful. Like, okay, the first round he looked okay. Yeah. Then the second and third round, I yeah. was like, this man needs to do jujitsu. I remember when that fight was announced, and I'm sorry, Sunshine, I apologize, but when it was first announced, I remember like being on the fence about who is going to win. I'm like, if it stays on its feet, it's sunshine, yeah. in my opinion. If it goes to the ground, I mean, you got a black belt versus, you know, a brown belt, you know, <laughs> sunshine. And, um, you know, and so I was thinking that's danger, you know, keep mm -hmm. it on the feet. I was shocked that AJ did not uh, finish it on the ground. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. I think a lot of people were. Um, and not only did he not finish it on the ground, but... Sunshine made him look like it was his first day in jiu-jitsu. Dude, he, he started doing good. It was, and, and it's one of those, it's almost one of those fights that you look at and you're like, was that fixed, you know? Because it just doesn't seem like it'd be real, you know? But um, as far as, you know, him with our promotion, he was really great to us. Um, I got to talk to him behind the scenes. He was nothing but polite and awesome to work with. 
Um, but, uh, and of course he produced those epic pictures that we have of Jake Shields and Chael and Kevin and, and the slap incident that happened. Um, I'm slap like, gate. I'm convinced that Jake Shields did not actually want to smack, uh, AJ because I feel like if he really wanted to, he would have found his way around Kevin and Chael, but who knows? So I just, yeah, those pictures are everything. Shout out to Russell Smith, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay. Last question before we get you out of here. All right. Name me your dream matchup. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And actually, I'm going to. For hold what? On. I want MMA. Okay. And A. That's right. Fair. A. A. It can be anybody. Anybody active right now. Active? Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a matchup. Not recently retired or anything? No, no. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess if you like somebody like recently, but like uh, if you were going to put a match together. McGregor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I might McGregor put, versus no. I might um, put Connor in it. Connor will be in it anyway. Yeah. You know, I, okay, so I'll tell you the first match that came to mind. Mm-hmm. And it was Jones versus Gustafson. That was the very first one that came to mind just because like. That was such a good fight. Um, but, like, the first one. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I feel, like, obligated Chael to say, like, Son and Silva 3 or something. You know? <laughs> That's so horrible. But one, I feel no, obligated hey, to say it. One of Honestly, the greatest. Honestly, neither that's, one of them are active right now, so to speak. Yeah. It's like, you know, know what could happen. Hey, that's one of the but, greatest rivalries of all time. I but can, you wouldn't want to beat with Silva with no belt on the line at this point. You nah. know? You want to, like, go all the way back to, like, 2011 Okay, or hey, hey. Okay, hey, what if about a grappling match with those two? Tell me people wouldn't tune in Dude, for you Anderson act as if Silva. We haven't tried. Anderson's ducking y'all? Who do we need to talk to? I can make a really the bank. like y- <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> the bank. Anderson. I mean it's Chael's show, it's not Chael. <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> No, you know, legends deserve legends pay. It's fine. I get it. I guess. But, uh, We're just talking about <laughs> grappling here. It's five minutes, Anderson. Yeah. No, um, that's what I like to say to everybody that gets on me about money. I'm like, it's five minutes. You know, it could be less if you're good. Um, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the guys that, you know, that walk in and they get like a paycheck for like, you know, a minute or like, like yeah. quick shout out to Craig Jones. But um you know, it's like it's five minutes. Like, if you want to extend it to ten minutes, fine, okay? But no. But you um, can get out of here as fast as possible. Yeah, you yeah. could. I'm like, make it a 30-second night, and you just made a lot of money for 30 <laughs> yeah. seconds. Um, Do the hourly yeah. rate. It yeah. drive me pretty yeah. good. Yeah. There's a... I won't name names, but there's a lot of divas that we deal with. We'll put it that way, that think that they're going to get... UFC pay because it's on UFC Fight Pass, but mm. no. We're just grappling here, guys. We're just grappling, guys. We're, you know, it's up to you if you get injured and don't we're, tap. Yeah, but, we're grappling know. for five minutes, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Overtime if you're not lucky. We're still going to yeah. pay you. Yeah. Yeah. We're still going to pay we're you. We're going to fly you in, too. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I mean, hey. Nice hotel on Sug Island. Hey. <laughs> Sug Island's a beautiful place. What else do we have to do? Yeah, I know. Come on. Oh, All right. Hey, any, any <laughs> shout outs? You got some shout outs? What's oh, up? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. You know, I feel like I should shout out Sean at Bridge City Fight Shop. Hey, Sean. Um, uh, no, <laughs> just for my loyalty, you know. Um, she yeah. did not buy anything while she was here. I, I, was like, I was like, should I like wear a hoodie that says Bridge City Fight? No, I'm so horrible. No, it's cool to be here. It's good to be here. I appreciate the invite. Um, no, I mean, shout out to, uh, you know, Chael and Kevin for ultimately still believing in me and everything and loving me. I can't read anything that far away. <laughs> I'm getting notes, people, and I don't have them. Shout out to the boyfriend for putting up with me. Like, hey, thanks for coming. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and my mom, you know, she dealt with a lot of tears over the years. No, uh, you know, no, I mean, honestly, just shout out to the fans, really, because without the fans, I mean, you can say it till we're blue in the face, but we could have a show, but if nobody watches it, nobody cares. So it's, you know. They keep us alive, even during this COVID time. Yeah. Sug Island's thriving. Well, I just want to say that uh, I appreciate... Shout out to you. Hey! 
I was going to say shout, shout out, out to you. you. I was going to okay, say, hey, we'll rub each other's shoulders. You know what? That. Thank you. Thank you, though. You've put on a lot of entertaining fights. We are both big fans. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this was awesome. We could go way longer. We could. I could yeah. sit here and ask you a million questions, <laughs> but we got to get you out of here. Yeah. Hey, follow us on Instagram at chickenbonebjj. At Dojo Outfitters, at Boss Lady MMA, and you already know, at Submission Underground, we out! Peace!